In school, we learn how to count. Okay, maybe not you. We learn about physics and biology. Okay, maybe not you. We learn how to interact with our peers. Okay, maybe not you. Yet, no one teaches us what is enough and how to feel enough. Within a consumption society, it's crucial to define enough. Otherwise, we will constantly need something, whether it be new clothes, a beauty treatment, or more likes. The fear of not having enough and being enough had a destructive impact on my life decision and mental health. Fortunately, I got out of the circle of endless needs because of the minimalist lifestyle and values that comes with it. In this episode, I want to help you discover what is enough in terms of stuff and how to feel enough within. No individual should longer suffer because of society's pressure to look better and have more. Each of question asked is directed to you. Keep watching and hit the subscribe button and remember to write in the section below your reflection to connect with me. I want to inspire you, but I love to be inspired as well. How many likes and followers are enough? From the minimalist perspective, one like is enough. I suggest minimizing your focus on numbers numbers and maximizing the connection and quality of what you add. As a minimalist, you might even cut social media. Yet, I am a filmmaker and I won't cut social media. I just had to learn a different perspective on this topic. I am at the right moment to talk about it because I started to make videos about nine months ago and as you see I have 500 subscribers. Some might say it's not much and I thought like this too. Of course, I want to be paid for the advertisement you have to watch before the video because I do a lot of work to prepare a video and on the other hand, uh, YouTube shouldn't put advertisement before if they don't value my channel, right? Does this fact make me feel less worthy? Do I need more? The feeling of needing more likes and followers is the new normal in society. It doesn't matter if you are a filmmaker or just an individual putting yourself pictures out. Do you know why? The answer is simple. The apps are designed to make us feel shitty and high simultaneously. In addition, social media evokes comparison in us. We love to compare ourselves to someone else. When you compare ourselves to often it might result in depression, poor body image, eating disorders and decreased over well-being. Oh wow, this egg has so many likes and I have only a few. I'm less worthy than this egg. Why is my head not so perfect? Your life doesn't equal the numbers of likes and followers. Separate it, okay? You are you. Feel yourself in the wholeness, in the present moment and clear your mind. You exist and breathe whether you have a thousand likes or one like or none on zero. You are still here. Not long time ago I realized that by thinking I didn't have enough subscribers, I under I under I underestimated not only me but you. Yet you know who you are? You are a legend. I have 500 legendary subscribers. So view your followers, even when it's one, uh, as a legendary one. It's so simple to shift the perspective of not having enough to have more than enough. On this occasion, thank you for subscribing to my channel. It's easy to subscribe to people with millions of followers. If everyone views it as something good, I will follow it. Yet you decide to subscribe to a girl's channel that makes videos about minimalism and doesn't have millions? Are you crazy? No, you aren't. As I said, you are a legend. How much are enough clothes? This question I would never ask myself two years ago. I was buying, excited to go shopping, you know, my daily entertainment. I could spend my whole salary on clothes. There was never enough. My purchase choices were driven mainly by the images I have seen on social media, newspapers and television. Whoa, this girl looks incredible in this dress. Let me click the link. Okay, I will take it. I want to be this high standard, independent, crushing in my new style dress tape, sassy girl. Where's my money? Sorry, young man, can you pay for my coffee, please?
every season there is a new collection of clothes. We grow up in a fashion culture that, you know, puts on a pedestal people who are well dressed. To define my enough in terms of clothes, I had to clean my wardrobe. Here is the episode about it. Second of all, I no longer buy new clothes. The number of clothes I have is enough. Whenever I want something, I will buy it second hand and I will give one thing away. This rule helps me to buy clothes intentionally. I buy one thing and I give one thing away. In addition, I'm no longer amazed by the influencers' images. We mainly post things where we look good and are happy or, you know, sassy. So ultimately, we associated looking good with happiness, feeling good, being successful, which isn't the case. I had to understand that the amount of clothes and the way I looked wasn't equal to happiness and it doesn't change me inside. Yeah, so that was a tough lesson to learn because we think that when we always, you know, look good, there's always good inside. And in some cases it might go hand in hand when we look good, we go to feel inside, but sometimes we outside we look perfect and inside we are a mess. My life goal is to feel the same strength and power whether I look powerful outside or wear pyjamas. Many theories tell us about the importance of clothes, but when you can feel the same power within no matter how you look, is it the moment when no one can destroy you. Do clothes determine your state? Oh wow, I love your clothes, you're so powerful. I know, now I will give a motivational speech to everyone. Oh, your clothes are horrible, you are not powerful. You aren't right. How I speak and believe in my power isn't determined by my clothes. If you undermine my influence because of clothes, this is just a reflection of you. You wouldn't be able to perform if you wore a white t-shirt. I will give a motivational speech to everyone because I understand my power. I want to tell you that you have enough clothes and you have power within. And you don't have to prove it by the perfect look constantly. You can work on power within because it lasts longer than clothes, especially the fast fashion clothes. Clothes must be updated when you underestimate your inner strength. I know that others judge our clothes, but you shouldn't care about them. Hate and the opinions of others aren't your problems. The point of me telling you all of this is to strengthen you. Set boundaries between you and those who might judge you. I'm not allowing anyone to cross the line. I visualize it, I visualize it like this. I am me and here is my energy. I'm assertive and intelligent, but you know, I wear ugly clothes, let me say, it's, it's beautiful, but sometimes. Someone says this shirt doesn't fit the jeans, I don't like how you speak. A few years ago I would feel small inside, now because I visualize my energy and a boundary between um, the, this person and me, I don't allow these words to cross it. It's like waiting in a car for a train to pass. The train is the hate. You close the barrier to protect yourself. It opens again when the person moves. As a result, it didn't touch you. You can move on and be vulnerable to people again. How much knowledge is enough? It's never enough. We live in an age where it's such a loss to not take an opportunity to learn and expand our perspective. Free courses, studies, open bibliotheques, scholarships, videos and so on. Please treat this endless ocean of information with curiosity rather than lack of knowledge. The overwhelm might appear fast when we realize how much information is out there to learn. So take it slowly and enjoy this opportunity. It's a privilege. It's a big privilege. I love to learn. The appearance doesn't change, but the inside improves. Think of it. If we change the compliments we give others, we might change society. The compliment that we receive is about our looks always. As a result, people aspire to change their appearance rather than boost their knowledge. Wow, you are so skinny! You look much better! Wow, you gain weight! What happened? You look fantastic today! You look horrible! Rarely do people give compliments about knowledge. I remember when I stepped into my intellectual process of growth. 
I had one, I'm still in it. And I learned more about, um, you know, psychology and used various words to uh, describe the world. And I made progress, I really made progress. Uh, you know, I changed my lifestyle from materialism to minimalism and I never received compliment about it. It was always about how I looked. Oh wow, it's great to speak with you. You had to learn a lot through the year. It's impressive. Why don't you comment that I gain weight? What's wrong with you? Who sent you here? Who? Write in the comment how often do you receive... Oh, I saw a spider. Uh, how often do you receive opinions about how you look and how often you receive compliments about what and how you speak? It's nothing wrong with complimenting someone, yet statistically it's like, I don't know, 99% compliment on the appearance and 1% on the knowledge. To assume, finding a balance is crucial, otherwise cosmetics, clothes and followers will dominate our lives and our mind state. We must know the limit in this world because if we give too much attention to possessions, we will miss life, the all experiences that wait for us. Questions such as what is enough have to be specific. You might have enough clothes but feel a need for more cosmetics. Asking the right question is a key to unfolding in which areas we need more work. Write in a section below if you enjoyed this episode, I can make a series in which we will be defining enough in different uh, sectors, you know, stuff and feelings. And I want to leave you with the final quote. Be thankful for what you have, you will end up having more. If you concentrate on what you don't have, you will never, ever have enough. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video if you find this valuable.